if you have got a loop supply, there is some things you need to do before you ever think about installing an EV charger. It will make it slightly more challenging to get a fix. I'm happy with that, honestly. Hi guys, welcome to the channel. So if you've clicked on this, I imagine you're about to have an EV charger and the Sparky has mentioned that you've got a looped supply. That is exactly what's happened here. There is a looped supply and I'm here today to install a brand new Sync Energy EV charger to a loop supply. So for those of you who don't know what a loop supply is, a loop supply is where we've got two incoming cables to your main incoming fuse. So which that actually means that this property and next door are actually connected together. So I'm gonna take you underneath the stairs where the main fuse is located and show you what, what it actually is. So what we've got here is our main incoming fuse set up and this is the dreaded loop supply. Now we've got an 80 amp incoming fuse, another consumer unit here, but we're not gonna attach onto this one. We're actually gonna put a separate board in this cupboard somewhere. I haven't quite figured out where I'm gonna put it yet. Might be down this end more so, so we'll split the tails, which are these little bad boys. I'm gonna split those and then bring them around to probably over here somewhere and then go through the garage to run the cable. So if you have got a loop supply, there is some things you need to do before you ever think about installing an EV charger. So before you do anything, you need to contact your local DNO to get authorization to do the job. Because if it turns out that the supply that's connected, let's say next door, has already got an EV charger fitted, the chances are they're gonna not authorize that to be done. So we've already contacted the DNO and we've had it signed off in writing, thank God, so I can turn up today and get it all installed. So. The kit that we're gonna be using to install it today, we've got our Ultra EV cable, we have got our dedicated EV little small board with surge protection device installed, and we have got a tethered EV charger, which is what you're sitting on right now. So the plan is this. So where that cable is there, that is basically the other side of the consumer unit is just there. So I think we're gonna bring our cable in around about here. We're gonna clip it down the wall, down there, go through at an angle, and then pick up on the outside. That's gonna be running round. And then we're going to be installing the EV charger around this sort of location here. The reason behind that going there is because when you've got the Range Rover there and potentially a plug-in hybrid defender that's gonna be sitting where the van is, it gives you the best option for both. So that is the plan, that is what we're gonna do. So if you're new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you do, the link is in the corner as usual. So for those of you who are brand new to the channel, what we generally do is give you hints and tips on the electrical industry of what we do every single day. There's no gatekeeping, so make sure you subscribe. So now we've got our cable through, which in my eyes, that is the most awkward bit, is getting it past that garage door frame and round. Now, obviously the outside of the building here, this bit, is actually clad. So if you're not careful, you will knock that cladding off and that would be a big problem because you would have to use something as a temporary measure, obviously, like CT1, and um, not sponsored by CT1, by the way. Um, or BT1, is it? Power? Power? Grab and bond. Power grab and bond. Yeah. And you'll have to glue that back on. Uh, and also the homeowner would go, uh, you've wrecked my house. What the hell are you doing? Uh, so next job for me is we're gonna be drilling through this side. Now, what I'm probably gonna do is use a small core drill um, because I tend to find that if I don't do it that way, it's gonna blow the brickwork. Now, obviously I know it's the garage and I know the homeowner wouldn't give it absolute monkeys, but uh, I do. So let's get that set up and get that drilled through. Okay, so we've now cored through and there we go. So really happy with that location and you may have noticed that I actually drilled at a slight angle to encourage obviously the cable to be able to bend in the right place. 
and then we're going to mount the, the board sort of here. And uh, yeah, the reason why I've done it with a core drill gives me a little bit of a larger diameter, which will make life a lot easier for obviously bending all the radius and all the rest of it, and try and keep it all a little bit neat and a little bit of hoovering needed. So that location couldn't have been any better in my eyes. I think that was absolutely spot on and uh, wasn't a guesstimate at all. Um, shout out to the customer, customer points. That's my second brew of the day and it is only quarter to uh, 10. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm now gonna do it, because now I've got my run back into the board, so I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm now gonna start fixing it back round the front and do it in reverse so we'll get the wall charger all mounted up and then go backwards so i've just got a few plants to move a few pots to to get sorted but because of the building has got the cladding on it it will make it slightly more challenging to get a fix in so i've got a spit nailer with me hopefully that works it has been playing up recently which is really frustrating um i can't figure out what's wrong with it because it is fairly new but heavily used so I don't know whether it's a firing mechanism or something like that so fingers crossed that works because that has been an absolute godsend but I'm not entirely sure how it works for the cladding itself um, but we're going to get the EV charger mounted up here and um, yeah work in reverse. So the type of charger it is it's a Sync Energy Type 2 tethered charger with a seven and a half meter tethered lead uh, which will work absolutely perfect in this situation. So for those of you who have never installed one of these, they are as straightforward as they can possibly be. So they almost work in a plug and play system. So you've got a plug this end, which obviously you wire your, your cables into. It comes everything that you need to install it. Also, you have got your stuffing gland, which comes in the bottom. Um, it's just, from an installer's point of view, it's just a dream to fit. There's no extra boxes that you need to put on externally. There's nothing, you know, that's, it's just, it just does exactly what it says on the tin. It's nice and straightforward. Also, what they have now released is inside here, they've got some basically covers, right? So it comes with the gray cover, but there's multiple ranges that you can basically upgrade to if you wanted a different color. So let's say you've got a different color render on the outside, you can choose a different one to suit. So I've just seen, um, I've just done, sorry, a, a bank of four EV chargers, which I've all fitted the non-tethered versions of these, our local Ford dealership. And I'm changing all of the covers over to all the blue, just to keep it a little bit more on brand for them. They haven't asked me to do it. It's just something I, I think it would just be a nice little touch, being as we're doing an absolute ton of work for them moving forward as well. I think it just be, just goes with the brand, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, so a great bit of kit. The other thing I like about it is when you're installing the back plate, there is nothing there. You haven't got all the other gubbins to hold on and faff about with it. You literally just install this first, get your cable through and then terminate it in there and all the heavy stuff is away. So I found a fairly flat-ish bit of the wall, um, which is where I'm gonna mount this uh, EV charger and it doesn't look too bad for the cable going down either. So you, cause this wall's pretty gnarly, I could practically rock climb on it. You gotta choose a, a fairly decent spot uh, and go with that. So wish me luck. Right, job done. Okay, so one of the things you need to really make sure that you are doing is fitting boot lace ferrules. So they are on now on the connector. And then that is the plug and play system that we're gonna now sort out. So the CT as well is really important to make sure you're in the right terminals. So if you look on, on here, so you've got CT1 PV, obviously is for your solar and then 4885. So that is the connection that we use when we're using multiple EV chargers in conjunction with the load balancer that, uh, that, that I fitted at the Ford job. 
So we're gonna get this all mounted up. Now it is a bit of a challenge finding some fixings to go in. So we, we're just gonna make it as neat as possible and uh, yeah, get this front on. So we've now got all the cable in, so it's back into the cupboard underneath the stairs. But I just needed obviously a bit of hoovering and stuff like that to be done. So EV charger is mounted up on the wall and then we've come down and then tucked it round as you've seen. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hoover these bits of dust up because it's dry, which will be a bit of a, a blessing really to do it now. And then that's led round, followed the contours, gone round and then back up and then back in. So. Obviously with having the core drill done that way, it takes all the pressure off the edge of the cable and then we'll silicon all this up, make sure it's nice and neat and also sealed. Um, even though obviously it's an integral garage, it's always best to seal all these bits up and get it all covered. So we're we'll going to see where that lands on the inside. Okay, so the cable's coming through here. Um, so the board that we're using, again, is another BG board. So there's two different types of this and they look identical but there's one key difference so this is actually the metal clad still ip i think it's 66 this one um but they do it obviously a non-metal version which actually i've got in the van as well so i can show you that but they look identical um but obviously this is going within the dwelling so it needs to be a metal consumer unit which is what this is it's got surge protection as well at the source so we're all covered because as you can imagine that range rover is going to cost you quite a little bit of money so for the sake of having a surge protection which i'd always recommend that you do because if you don't have that for the sake of what 50 quid or whatever they are probably not even that i mean it's a no-brainer uh, and it's also a requirement as well so yes so essentially that is going to be going on somewhere around there um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to bring the tails around the top uh, and then they're going to split them sort of here um, by the powers of wizardry where that main fuse is going to somehow come out the dno is going to come out they're going to then disconnect that for me wait for me to do it while i then connect that like absolute legends and then come and pop that back in honestly so what we're going to do is going to mount that board up there Gonna bring the tails around the top and uh, bring the old ultra straight in. That's the job. So obviously do a bit of prep work on the bench, get our stuffing glands in, our tails gland as well, and that should make life a lot easier. So while the customer's on a call at the minute, so I've just energized everything, everything's all sorted. So I went through all the testing, so the testing are absolutely bang on. So I will try and show you underneath the finished product under the stairs as long as the client is finished within time. So we've energized the actual charger itself. So that's all done. And now, so it's now set up on the app. It's really, really straightforward to use. Now, once I've set this up with my app, which is fine, you then transfer this over to the client, which I'll do once I've done with that. But the testing side of things, we use obviously an adapter. Um, so I have got my, uh, ZS value as 0.29, uh, which is absolutely perfect. And not what I'd expect on a small installation like this. So with the adapter, let's try and put you somewhere. Um, so with the adapter, obviously you just change the different settings of what you're calling for on the charger. Now with it being set up the way it is at the minute, I'll have to use my app on there to say, yeah, I want to charge. So charger controls, which is what it is right now. So I want to override that because at the minute it's set up to have be on an off peak and then all chargers have a time delay start. So on there you'll see it was a nine minutes and 25 seconds. And obviously we want to override that right now, which is what we're doing. You'll hear a bleep. And now it will say that we're now charging our device. And you'll get this on the indication 
on the actual charger. So you'll get the flashing green to say that it's basically shoving voltage down out to the actual car, which is not really in place. So now I've done all that and I've gone through all the testing procedure, uh, which is fine. So you do ZS, do your RCD testing, and obviously you're test testing the board like you would at any other board. You now need to transfer that over to the customer, and then he has full control and I don't have anything to do with it anymore, uh, which is perfectly fine, so we will sort that. So, which leads me back onto, it then leads me back onto the issue with having a loop supply. So I've had it time and time again where people have contacted me and said, oh Mike, I've got a loop supply, I've been told I can't have an EV charger fitted. Y you, you can, you can have one fitted, but there's just a lot more work for the electrician behind the scenes. So what I had to do, I contacted the DNO, sent them all the client's details. They did an assessment and said, yes, that's fine because either next door, one way or the other, I haven't got an EV already installed. I've then had a notification come through to me and the client to say, yes, that's fine. You can crack on with the job. Um, I've got an 80 amp supply here anyway, which is great, um, but that's the only way to do it. So now obviously I've completed the job. I'll go back to the office. I'll then notify them again to say it's now been installed, but the clients actually told me that they're coming out to do an assessment for the unlooping, I think they said a Tuesday, uh, so a week today um, to come out and sort that out. So yeah, I mean, everyone says it's hard work, it's, this, it's not, it's just a little bit more hard work for the electrician, but it's only a few clicks. Like it's not really a, a big deal. So it's near enough sorted. There's a hell of a lot of tidying up to do. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, so this is the board as it stands now. So we're all labeled up. EV charger is on an RCBO. 32 amp is for the SPD, which is on this end. And obviously the main switch is installed. So like I said, they're coming out, I think next Tuesday to do an assessment for that lot. And then we've got our CT clamp on here, but some of this might need to move. So we shall see, but hopefully it can all stay in place. And then we've got our MET all installed now because obviously we've split the earthing system ready for that so that is it the range is now charging which is fantastic i've just got the deadlocks all on because we all know it's a problem having vans these days um, but yeah it's all sorted nice straightforward job just gone through it all with the client on how to use it all um, we've just obviously put that on so he's now going to go through all the scheduling side of things to obviously put that down on the off peak so hopefully if you've enjoyed this video and you haven't yet subscribed please make sure you do link is in the corner and we shall see you on the next one so that is another job completed and in fairness it's been a really straightforward job now i know the loop supply thing can be a little bit daunting because in fairness, I've been in that situation before where I actually had a customer re ring me not too long ago and said, oh, I can't sort it, I can't do this and the other. And from my experience, from my end, now our local DNO to, to this property is Western Power and they couldn't be any better to work with. So if you've got a loop supply and you've been told you can't have an EV charger, then maybe look at the right electrician. So if you're looking for some electrical work to be carried out, then you and you are in our area, more importantly, I don't want to travel for 10 million miles, then uh, why don't you click on the link in our website and uh, see if we can come and do some work for you. So if you're looking to have some electrical work carried out, then in the description below, there is a link to our website. Get in touch and let's see if we can do some work together. Right, on that note, it's time for me dinner. <laughs>